Okay, this next one, looking at number two on the list. So the same woman I'm talking about, as I, this whole show tonight is designed, was designed really off of the experience with one, one individual woman that I was seeing uh, who really hit a plateau, is restaurant eating or restaurant dining. Now, a lot of you are thinking, gosh, Dr. Osborne, what, what am I supposed to do? I can't eat out. You know, I can't uh, take medicines because they're contaminated with gluten. Like, what, what am I going to do? Well, I want you to understand why this is so important. When you eat out at restaurants, you're getting exposure to GMO, genetically modified organisms. Those restaurants, you know, unless you're going specifically to a farm-to-table organic restaurant, you know, the vast majority of your restaurants are chains. They're fast food chains, or even they're, they're maybe not fast food, but they're, they're chains across the world. Like, like, I don't want to mention any names, but um, you guys know what I'm talking about. You go, you sit down at these restaurants. And how is it that, that you know, these chain restaurants, how is it that food can taste the same? No matter where you go, whether you, you, maybe this restaurant could be in New York, in the same, same chain of restaurant in Texas, right? In the same restaurant in California. How does the food from one to the next to the next taste exactly the same no matter which place you go? Because in my experience, real food actually takes on flavor based on where it was grown, the soil it was grown in, if it's an animal, what it was eating, right? So in order to get the same taste in 300 locations nationwide, you have to do some serious chemical manipulation. And, they, and this is common in the restaurant industry. Chemical manipulation is what allows that food to taste the same no matter where you go. So you, you get all these chemicals that are in the food. And one of the examples is a, is a, is a substance called meat glue, which is used like if you think you're ordering chicken breast, a lot of times you're, what you're really getting is chicken particulate that's glued together with a microbial enzyme produced by a bacteria. It's called meat glue and it mimics gluten. So it can really sabotage your recovery. It's the same thing they use to make hot dogs. They use it in dairy products. It's used in a number of different confections. So again, this is just one example, but other things like MSG, is a common additive in a lot of these products. And then they also add a, a variety of different texture and, and taste manipulators to these different foods, again, to get the food to taste the same no matter where you're eating it. And so you're being exposed to GMO, you're being exposed to pesticides, you're being exposed to chemicals. And then that doesn't even include the fact that you're also, you know, depending on the restaurant, let's say that, you know, a young guy and they'll say, Jack is working tonight. Jack's 19. He doesn't really care about your gluten-free diet. He understands the gluten-free menu to the same level of expertise that a fifth grader um, who's never heard of gluten understands the gluten-free menu. And he's in charge of, of making your food. So in that attempt, you get a lot of cross-contamination in your food. He's using, you know, if you order a fried food, for example, they're going to fry your food in the same oil. They fry up everything that contains wheat. If you're, um, if you're ordering a chicken breast that you want it to be grilled, um, that chicken breast is sitting on the same countertop next to chicken fried steak where they've got it battered in wheat. And so there's all this risk of cross-contamination that you're going to get persistent exposure to. And so restaurant dining is a nightmarish of an idea if you really want to improve. Now, that, you know, many of you, again, are thinking, gosh, you know, eating out is such an important part of my social structure. Um, but what I want you to understand is if you decide that you're going to attempt to eat out and do no grain, no pain, you're probably going to be pretty unsuccessful in regards to getting lots of cross-contamination in regards to getting exposure to these things. So it's just not something that I recommend in the case of the woman that I'm talking about right now. She would eat out on a weekly basis. She wanted to go eat out with her friends. Again, I understand that social interrelationships are very important. My advice is if you've got friends that always want to go to restaurants, eat before you leave and go hang out and have the camaraderie, but don't do it while sabotaging your plans at returning to health because this is one of the easiest ways to maintain your illness is eating out. Remember, food uh, production at restaurants, unless you, you've got a really good organic farm-to-table type restaurant, you're not going to get something uh, that's good for you, right? And so don't fool yourself. Chick-fil-A 
Sorry, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is not a healthy fast food option. I hope that's not a news flash to any of you watching. They have this connotation of health, but, but at the end of the day, it's still fast food. It's still highly chemically processed and manipulated. And, uh, and, and you know, it, it, it's still not good for you, right? So don't, don't lie to yourself. If you, again, if you've got a copy of No Grain, No Pain, the very first chapter and one of the fundamental tenets is be true to yourself. Do not lie to yourself, right? All forward progress and good health starts with brutal truth. And sometimes you have to be brutally honest with yourself in order to progress. Okay, number three on the list is alcohol. Now, I'm, I'm going to cross through the word abuse. Um, and just because most of you are probably thinking, well, I don't abuse alcohol. So, so what really does that mean, alcohol abuse? Well, alcohol abuse is, you, you know, in my opinion, is you're drinking it daily, right? If you have a glass of wine at dinner every night, that's in my opinion, if you're trying to get healthy and you're not, this is abusing alcohol. It's, it's, you're using too much and your body can't overcome it. Um, if you drink alcohol, not every day, but you drink more heavily on the weekends and it's consistent, this is a form of abuse. Again, if you're trying to get healthy, I'm not trying to call all of you alcoholics if you do that, but if you're sick and you're trying to figure out why, you need to understand some fund fundamental tenets about alcohol. Number one, it robs your body of the B vitamins. There's actually a disease called Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, which is alcohol stealing your B vitamins from you. You need B vitamins to heal and repair. Many of you were already B vitamin deficient because of years of gluten-induced intestinal damage, and so you're already malnourished. Keeping alcohol in the equation is going to only serve to sabotage the other areas where you're working hard to try to improve your diet. So um, alcohol robs B vitamins, it steals them. It's a diuretic, so it will dehydrate you. Alcohol is a direct poison. And the byproduct of alcohol, which is acetylaldehyde, your liver has to deal with. Remember, if you are gluten sensitive, your liver is probably already struggling. Alcohol also feeds yeast. Now, if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know that yeast is one of those things that mimics gluten. So if you've got a yeast overgrowth, you've got a gluten reactivity problem, even if you're not eating gluten. Alcohol promotes yeast overgrowth in your GI tract. Alcohol also suppresses your immune system's function. You need your immune system to work well, uh, especially during cold and flu season. So these are just reasons why you, you wouldn't want to do this daily or binge mass drinking in a bigger way on the weekends. So again, especially if you're not healed, if you, if you find yourself and you're still struggling and you're not where you want to be in your health, it's definitely a no-no. Now, if you're healthy and you're doing everything well and you generally follow a good diet, if you wanna have a drink here or there, I don't fault you for that and I don't judge you for that. I don't judge you even if you abuse it. That's the price you choose to pay. But my point is, a healthy alcohol consumption is going to be in great degrees of moderation. And moderation is not one glass a night instead of the bottle every night. Like, like some of you have a definition of moderation that needs to be checked and balanced. So again, alcohol for many different reasons is problematic if you're trying to recover and repair. And it's one of those, and again, in the case of the woman that we're talking about tonight, she liked to eat out, she liked to join her friends, and they liked to have a drink socially when they would go out. So here she was taking a medicine that had gluten in it, and gluten was the reason why she was sick in the first place. She was eating at a restaurant on a weekly basis, and when she would go to the restaurant, she would be getting exposure and drinking alcohol as well. So that kind of is the third aspect. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.